Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. As you can imagine, we've been getting many requests to record a video on how to make a face mask. And while I know there's a lot of videos out there, I mean, so many on YouTube, I've got just a little bit of a different thing here that I think is going to help these masks be a little more effective. And if you can't find elastic, I've got a solution for you. Um, I want to definitely go over that because I don't want to leave you kind of wondering, now what? If I can't find the solution, uh, elastic, now what do I do? We'll go over that as well. Let's jump into it. Um, if you do get the elastic, if, uh, again, I've got some on order here coming inbound. By the time you see the video, it may be gone. So we'll go over the option to how to do the straps if you don't have the elastic. If you can get eighth inch, it's preferred. This is actually quarter inch. This is all I currently have. This would work too. I've cut these to six and a half inches. I've heard measurements of seven. Personally, when I made the mask with seven inches, they're a little bit loose. So I think that six and a half, maybe six and three quarter, may be a better measurement. So let's get started here. That's just my input on actually using the, um, the mask myself and kind of testing them out. Two pieces of fabric, they prefer cotton fabric. They're asking to please not use flannel on the outside because it's too loosely woven and it kind of doesn't really, it's not that much of a barrier to the germs coming in. If you want to put uh, maybe flannel on the inside um, of two layers of fabric, that might work. But what I have heard is preferred right now is using a non-woven interfacing. Not woven. Non-woven is the key. Right now, this is a Pellon 950F shirt tailor. Uh, I've got some of that coming into the building. I've got a lot of other kinds of non-woven interfacing. If it's non-woven interfacing, it'll work. This happens to be fusible. It doesn't need to be fusible, but uh, so don't think there's any wrong thing to do. We appreciate you doing anything right now. Grab a piece of your fabric and put your interfacing on the back side of that, because mine is fusible, I'm gonna iron it down. It's kind of nice to use fusible if you can find it. It's just one less thing moving around. Now, if you happen to you know, cut your interfacing to a slightly different size, like it looks like I, I did, I'm just gonna trim that away, right? Ideally, you will cut everything the same size, six by nine. Iron it to the back side of that if you have fusible interfacing. If you don't have fusible, just lay it on there. And if you don't have interfacing at all and you're just using two pieces of fabric, that's okay too. Right sides together. We're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to put the elastic in. We'll start about here. Definitely back up. We're going to come about here, insert our elastic, definitely secure in the corners multiple times. That's the tension on the mask. We'll do the same thing over here and come back around. Stop about here. Put the elastic in the corner on a diagonal. It's okay to let it poke out just a touch. Now you know for sure it went into the corner. What you don't want is it to be too far that way and you miss it. It's okay if it sticks out a little bit. It's now out of my way as I come down this side. Stop. Pivot the elastic around without adding any twist to it. Come into the corner, trying to keep it out of the way. So as you come down here, you don't inadvertently sew over it. Pinch with your fingers. like before, corners on the diagonal. I like seeing it to prove that I, I have it far enough out. Move it 
pivot that around without adding any twist to it. In that corner again, pinch. Up, oh, went too far. There we go. Here's where I started. I would recommend you stop about here. Before you turn it through, go ahead and clip those corners. Any elastic that was sticking out will now be taken care of and it'll make it easier to turn through and a little bit better in the corners. Quilters are super compassionate people and makers are such compassionate people that it's a blessing to be able to help. If you have any trouble turning it through, that's where something like this is just helpful getting in those corners, right? These are not going to be thrown away. They're going to be used. So we want to do a good job, but we don't want to take forever to make them because we need to make a lot of them. All right. I'm going to take it to my pressing mat. I want to just, what I'll be doing so you can see it, is just folding that under the quarter of an inch, folding it under. It doesn't have to be perfect. Function over form right now, right? Let's take that to the mat. Okay. All right. Now, here's a step that I think is going to save people time. I've seen other ways that people make these where they kind of fold one side and then try to fold the other side evenly. Do them at the same time. So decide what they want are two folds and moving in the same direction, okay? So you, let me look at so you can see this one. Grab it like this. My fingers are like this. I grab it, and I push it down equally, and I press it. I'll move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing easier. Grab it again. And bring it down and press fold it evenly it's the it's the fastest way to do the accordion fold and now it's even no question about it even if you need to pin it because you, you're worried about it coming undone pin it on this side don't pin it over here because now you'll be able to leave the pin in keep the pin out of the track of the seam allowance this is not the time to be sewing over seams those of you who um, you know, do so over seams regularly or over pins regularly, excuse me. Um, gosh, we need to really protect our sewing machines right now. I just wouldn't. So, and there's no need to, right? We can still keep it secured, keeping the pins out of the way, but this, that way they can stay in and nothing's going to move while we sew around. As we sew around this two times, we're going to not only be closing this opening, but you're going to be getting those accordions down twice. So you're going to sew with, you know, less than a quarter inch seam allowance because this is a quarter in here. Okay, trim your threads, take out your pins. We have a mask, guys. Okay, trim your threads for sure. I know we're all excited to give these right away. All right, let me try it on. I want you to see what this is going to look like. Okay. Okay, that's 
that's awesome. I can breathe. It's not hot. But the first ones I made, I made with just fabric. The interfacing is something I just recently learned. Because it's non-woven, it is such a barrier to germs. It's, it's so helpful. Again, it's better than nothing if you don't have the interfacing. Still make them out of just the fabric. Um, but if you can get the interfacing, it's even better. What are you going to do if you can't find elastic? You'll follow the same steps that I did, where I started with the two layers. Of course, if you can get the interfacing, awesome, get it, get it. Down in the corner where I put the elastic in, there's not going to be elastic there. Just come to the corner and pivot. You'll go all the way around, turn it through, do the accordion fold, stitch all the way around twice, and basically what you would have would be this. Then, to make your straps, you've got a couple of choices. If you have bias tape, just sew that one side closed. Um, make sure that you have, if you have any raw edges, I've got a strip here. Let's just pretend like this is bias tape, right? It would already be pre-folded for you. It would already look kind of like this. You would just want to open that up, fold one end down. This is if you have your bias tape already. It's going to look like this, right? You already know what bias tape if you don't know what bias tape is, that means you probably don't own it. So if you do know what bias tape is, you know it's going to look like this already. In that instance, if you already have that, just sew this open edge um, closed. Then all I did was sew it to the back of the mask. I did not try to insert that in the middle of these layers. It's more complicated. It's bulky. You're more likely to sew over it by, by mistake. You saw how I had to keep the elastic out of the way. So these are sewn basically to the outside of the mask. Again, function over form, ladies. This is not a beauty contest. We want protection is what we're looking for. Um, and gentlemen, I keep forgetting. All you guys out there, bless your hearts. Thank you for jumping in and watching our uh, YouTube channel. Maybe you're already a subscriber. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're learning about shabby fabrics for the first time. Welcome. Um, we make a lot of videos for everything, and now apparently masks too. All right, what do you do if you don't have bias tape? What I'd like you to do is either cut two, two and a quarter, or maybe even two and a half strips. If you have jelly rolls, if you're a quilter, you know what I'm talking about. You probably have those in your sewing room. Grab a jelly roll. It's two and a half inch strips already pre-cut. You're already rolling. If you don't have a jelly roll, you could cut anywhere from two two and a quarter to two and a half inch strips. And what we're looking for is four straps. What I did with these is I cut each length to 15 inches. 14 to 15 inches will give you the distance to be able to tie behind the head. Right here. So you want to make sure that your, st your straps are if you're going to err, err on the longer side, not shorter. They have to be able to secure in the back, okay? So to make the strips, if you don't have bias, just cut two, two and a quarter, or two and a half inch strips, and you can either pre-cut them to 15 inches, or you can make the entire strip and then cut them into 15 inch segments, okay? Uh, you'll fold one edge down and press. Fold in half. with a nice, get your iron all the way to its hottest setting. See the crease that's in the middle? Fold to the crease, fold to the crease, press. Now when I make these at home with my daughter, uh, because of, there's two sewing machines at home, she'll do one of these processes and I'll do the other. Because that way, she's like the expert at making this and then maybe I'm the expert at doing the accordion fold. So if you are sewing, in um, with other people and you want a tag team, it's just a suggestion that may get these masks done in more of a production style um, and get them to who needs them faster. All right, now I've got a raw edge down here as well. Go ahead and just open that up. Fold it down one time is all you need to do because when you fold back like this and toward the middle, Try to keep my fingers out of the way. 
Ooh, my iron's cooling down on me. There we go. So both ends are tucked in. That's because this is on the outside. We don't want a raw edge here or here. These will be washed probably very a lot of times, and we don't want them to fall apart or fray. Now, you'll just take that to your sewing machine. I'll just save you that time because I know you've got masks to make right now. And here's one that's finished. All I did was just start, come down here. Granted, only you technically would only need to do one side here to close it, but I want durability. I don't want anything getting distorted or, or breaking or tearing. I just, for stability, sewed close to the edge around all four sides. Once you have it like this, then you'll just take it to your mask. You'll make all four of them. I didn't measure. I just visually said, okay, it's about a quarter of an inch or whatever that measurement is. I just held it in place, and I just went to my sewing machine. And as you can see, I went over it multiple times. And that's how you can still make masks. If you don't have elastic, you can still do it. So guys, go make masks. Share, uh, share the video. The goal here is just to help our healthcare providers. They're on the front lines helping us, and it's our chance to give back. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.